Hello everyone. Let me start by asking you a question. What's the first word or image that comes to mind when I say this word? Church. Well, I don't know about you, but the first word that springs to my mind or first image is a church building and probably a, then a face-to-face -face Sunday morning service. Try looking up the word church in an online dictionary. Whichever one you go to, you pretty much get the same answer, which is this, a building used for public Christian worship. A few years ago, when we were still at Holy Trinity Claygate, uh, we, I helped, was helping to run a teaching series, and we, one week we got everybody to go away as homework and ask their neighbours and friends what they thought happened inside the building, Holy Trinity Claygate. And some of the answers were, well, I guess they, I was pretty surprised by some of them, but here, here are the most common answers we got. So the first one was, not sure. The second one was a club for retired people. The third one was a building renovation project. And the fourth one was a community choir. Now, our building and our Sunday morning face-to-face -face service, they are, of course, good things. But let's be clear, they are not the church. If you take them all away, the church is still there. Why? Because the church is you and me. It's not a place, but a people. It's not about Sunday mornings, it's about every day of the week. I do sometimes wonder whether these misconceptions uh, that people seem to have about church um, can get in the way of people discovering the real church and therefore the real Jesus Christ. Did you watch that YouTube video, The UK Blessing? You may have seen it on Sunday morning uh, in, on our online service. Right at the end of the video, when the music is fading, uh, there's a sentence appears across the screen. I'll read it to you. Our buildings may be closed, but the church is alive. The Bible doesn't actually speak about church. The, that word doesn't appear. What does appear is the Greek term ecclesia, which appears 114 times in the New Testament. This term means the called out ones, or the fellowship of followers of Jesus. Paul also had a favourite term for this ecclesia. He called it the body of Christ. Uh, for example, in 1 Corinthians 12, where he says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. It's interesting that so many of the most dynamic and fast-growing and flourishing church communities and networks don't seem to have church buildings. So, for example, uh, the early church is depicted in the book of Acts. Within 300 years, this movement had gone right across the Roman Empire. Uh, or think about the church in China in the last 40 years, where it's pretty much grown from under a million to over 100 million, and they meet in homes, just like the early church did in the Book of Acts. Or Travelling with Tear Fund, where I visited some of the poorest Christian communities around the world. Uh, and travelling around in Asia, for example, in Cambodia, uh, all the churches I met there just pull up chairs and meet outside a home. Uh, or travelling in Mumbai or in the slums of Delhi, where people just seem to meet under a tarpaulin uh, beside a home. In this crisis, as a community of followers of Jesus, all the usual familiar embellishments, they've all been taken away. The building, the face-to-face -face morning service on Sunday, the great sound and audiovisual system, the assuring in-person presence of our church leaders, and so on. And you know, it feels to me as if we're being unmasked. Without the veil of a building, a Sunday morning face-to-face -face service, people might now see the real church stripped back to the essential basics. A group of people doing their best together in the power of the Spirit to follow Jesus every day of the week, to love their community and the world and to introduce others to Jesus. And that, you know, it's that face, that's the face I want people to see. I do wonder whether there might now be an opportunity to uncover and reveal this real church, this ecclesia, free of all the things that reinforce people's misconceptions about what and who the church is. Okay, don't get me wrong, I love the St Mary's building. I love meeting in person on Sunday mornings with you. I really miss these at the moment. My point is that I love the church more. 
the real church, the called out people of God in this community. A friend leads a church in Marlow uh, on the Thames, uh, apparently one of the most photographed church buildings in the whole of the United Kingdom. And he says his favourite photo of the church is a map showing where all the members of the church live and work during the whole of the week. Would it not be wonderful if the dictionary definition changed one day? Imagine in a few years typing the word church into Google and getting this thrown back at you. A fellowship of people who follow Jesus Christ and inspire others to do the same. May God bless each of you over the coming week. Thank you.